good old hot chocolate. Does anyone else out there not drink any coffee you just like hot chocolate? So for any followers of my channel, you know that a couple videos ago, I did a underwater shoot for a short film that I've been working on. And I decided to take a high risk, high reward method and go with the cheap $70. It was a hundred dollars when I bought it. And then like two days later, discounted to like 65 bucks. So. That's fun. And I got a ton of comments on that videos and other platforms, basically telling me that I was crazy or brave or whatever you want to say. But I think it's safe to say that the majority of you, rightfully so, would not have gone with the same path of putting your very expensive equipment inside such a cheap, essentially glorified Ziploc bag. So then I got to thinking, is there any other use case for this bag besides going full blown underwater swimming with your camera sort of deal? Unlike just wrapping your camera in a bag or throwing a cover over top of it, this bag, again, in theory, if you get a good one, is going to be completely airtight, which means from a 360 point of view, nothing is supposed to be able to get in it. So there's a bunch of situations that I really think this could be a decent add-on. Now remember, the controlling the camera is very iffy. Like you definitely want to make sure that you have a like touchscreen back or very easy to access buttons. And then a lens that's not going to be so filling up the lens housing that you can't even reach in and change your focus. So as long as you have those things covered, then this really can be useful. One of the first places was like those color run things, which are like those uh, big like 5k or half marathon sort of situations where you usually run for a good cause um, But then like people are constantly throwing like dust or chalk or something and you always see photographers That like wrap their stuff up or whatever. But anyway, any everyone gets absolutely covered in this color stuff and I can only imagine how many cameras are completely ruined during these events. Someone could shoot one of those like dust cannon things directly at you and you'll be totally fine. Or well, you may not be, but your camera will be. And that's the important thing, right? If you're going to the beach, again, sand, once that gets into cameras, oh man, that can sometimes be worse than getting water into something. So this could be a great option for if you're going to the beach with no intention of swimming underwater with it, maybe you're filming your kids playing in the sand or whatever it may be, this will protect from that as well. Also, if you get caught in a rainstorm or you're intentionally out there filming in the rain, um, this obviously is great. This is kind of close to filming underwater, but instead of being fully submerged, your camera is basically just getting hit. Now, if you're used to high-end DSLRs, then you already know that those are weatherproof to these extents where they can be rained on and things like that. They're pretty much weather sealed. Um, and for something like the Blackmagic, which absolutely is not just like most cinema cameras, um, this would be a great addition to it. And yeah, I have full confidence that, you know, any up to decent sized rain is going to be able to be stopped by this hail. Not so much. This is not a hard case. Just, I don't know why you'd be filming out in hail because that would hurt you a lot. Hail not recommended. So those are situations that are a little less risky than fully submerging your camera underwater. But now I wanna show you some of the cool shots that you can get with this case just around your house. And I wanna show you some creative angles and shots that would really, I think, make people go like <laughs> Like everyone does like the, you know, reaching down to the sink and like splashing your face, slow-mo water. But what if you could start that shot inside the sink? Stuff like that really gets you out of the box just enough to where people go. <laughs> and yes, I understand this is kind of, again, you're starting to ride that line again of that higher risk because you are partially submerging it, but it's a lot less chaotic than being in like a pool or the ocean or something. So, and you get to choose how much it goes on. I don't need to explain anything to you. I'm just going to get into it. You decide how creative you want to be. I just want to show you what your options are, people. So let's get into those scenes. Like a mountain, making the devil ride in his 
All right, so I've been out here filming with the Dyka Pack S10 whatever for the past 20 minutes. I'm completely drenched. On video, you can rarely see rain, so probably doesn't look like it too much. But anyway, uh, my final consensus on like shooting outside with this thing is it definitely works. I mean, for my use cases, it's been fully waterproof. I dunked it like halfway under uh, there. I was running through up the stream and a couple other spots. Um, obviously, I don't know how the shots look yet. You guys will in just a second, or you just did, depending on how I edit this. In terms of functionality, I mean, I can't focus the lens at all. I had to keep running under cover, pop off the top, and then change the uh, focus to basically like, okay, I want to do close-ups now, set it to minimum focus, and then go out, get a bunch of shots, run back under cover, change the focus again. Uh, that's just not cool at all. Um, so you really need a good autofocus system to use this properly. Um, as well as taking off the cover, it looks like some condensation has gotten in on the inside. I don't believe it's actual water. I believe the seal is just fine. I think it's literally just the fact that I kept having to take it off and on. And so some condensation got inside a little bit and probably ruined some of the shots. Again, you probably already know that. Um, yeah, so I mean, is it worth 68 bucks? Sure. If you know you're going to be filming in the rain and you absolutely need it, or if this is like a stills camera, so then you have autofocus and things like that, um, I think it's great. You know, the touchscreen on the back, like, worked great. Um, I could see things just fine. Playback was great. Um, so again, yeah, compared to a real housing, which costs over $5,000, 68 bucks, you get what you pay for. That's my final consensus. Mm -hmm.